All right. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to fly in. Ready? Here we go. One. Somewhere two, over there. Three. Whoa, where did I come it's, from? It's not quite like the Chris Collinsworth slide with Al Michaels. Although if we can somehow get the Olivia fly in viral yes. like that, I think that would be pretty impressive. Now if I had a mixer, someone doing the audio, I would have them put some nice whooshing noises yes. over that. Maybe I'll do yeah. that in post. Yeah. We'll see. Not sure. Anyway, welcome to the that is day nine, but it yeah. is not technically our ninth live stream. Anyway, welcome to our live stream. We're talking yep. today about the Packers and training camp. I'm with Jim Ozarski. I am Olivia Reiner. If you haven't been with us yet, welcome. We're happy to have you. We are doing a live stream after every single Packers practice, except for family night. We did not yeah. do family night. That was so. pretty late. It was late, but as we know, we have people watching from all over the place. That is true. So it could it have been. It might have been early somewhere. Perfect. Yeah, it could have been yeah. perfect timing for if you were somewhere else. But alas, we didn't do it. So hopefully we will make up for our lack of a Facebook right. Live on Friday today, answering right. some of your questions over our on our Facebook page. Um, so I will pull that up right now on my phone. So while you check that out, I guess today, just for folks today, we'll run through quick things. Uh, shoulder pads only today as the Houston Texans come in Monday and Tuesday for joint practices. Expect more fully padded work. Also, Matt LaFleur says expect your first two hour plus practice, or maybe just a second on Monday, um, trying to get real work in the next few days. Yeah, so lots to come in the coming days. The first question I'll take here is from Tommy. Is Josh Jackson clear to play yet? Nope. Nope, he is still out. He's been out this entire training camp. Yep. Jamal Williams has been out. Aaron Jones was once again out. But yeah. there was a big name that is technically re has returned. Yeah. He did not do anything on the field, but he has been cleared to play, and that is Mason Crosby. So. Yeah, yeah, there was no uh, – Sam Ficken – kicked 12 times on family night so uh, he didn't even come out of the Hudson Center uh, Mason Crosby appeared on the field helmet in hand but yes you're right he also did not uh, do anything I'm guessing uh, in these live pra these joint practices they're going to want to do some live field goal drills so I expect Mason Crosby's first kicks of camp to come then so Kevin King was out today. <laughs> yeah. He has a Facebook hand... Live just melted down. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So well, someone has asking about that. Yep, We've got Kevin... Richard asking. Kevin King hurt again. Yes. Correct. He ha is hurt. Hamstring injury. Yep. If you remember back to last season, he had a <laughs> hamstring injury, yep. and that was what put him on the IR. So how concerning is it that Kevin King is back with an injury that is the same injury that kept him out of last season? Even though Matt Lafleur did acknowledge today that he wasn't concerned that it was related to last right. season at all. Um, I mean, unlike, say, Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams or even Fidel Brown with his calf who have been out, um, I, while we're probably going to get to the point soon with those guys of, of, okay, how concerning are their issues, Kevin King right away is a concern because let's rewind it to family night. So Kevin King starts out, participates, and then was not participating later in the practice. We asked Matt LaFleur about this post-practice and he said, well, I don't really know why he wasn't in the team drills. Something we'll find out about later. So it's possible Kevin King aggravated that that hamstring during family night, which would be during teams and running around and doing all of those things. So um, I would say it is concerning. Whether or not it's the same leg or same muscle or part of the muscle as what put him on IR last year, Olivia, it's just it's just another thing with him, unfortunately, and because it's he's been out for a while with a similar type of injury, you just, you know, it is. It's, it, it's got to be really frustrating for him, for Green Bay, and obviously the fans. So with Kevin King out, Tony Brown has gotten yeah. some more opportunities. He had a really big game on, on family yeah. night on Friday, had a pick six off of Deshaun Kaiser, and he attempted to Lambeau lead. <laughs> he said he today in the locker room that, the walls uh, upon which he attempted to Lambo leave, they're a lot higher than he anticipated. So <laughs> yeah, now the, he knows. Yeah, the first, uh, that is something you hear from the first time leapers, especially guys who aren't there very often, which would be defensive players, maybe an offensive lineman. Um, we have seen Tony Brown's beach YouTubes. Ooh, I do yeah. think he has the hops to get up on a Lambo leap, but yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't quite work well. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah, he did get first team reps. He was picked on a little bit. MV Marquez Valdez Scantling got him deep on a great throw from Aaron Rodgers. Um, Jake Kumaro got him for some stuff too. So Tony Brown is a 
I think, an intriguing young developing player. Um, I think Kadar Holman, the rookie out of Toledo this year, also fits in that group. You've seen both of those guys get reps when King and Alexander are being rested. So we'll see how they continue to develop. So Blake wants to know between Josh Hey, Blake Jackson, Martinez. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank yeah. you, Blake Martinez, for joining us. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not true. <laughs> A different Blake. Uh, who is better between Josh Jackson and Tony Brown? How do you see their roles in Mike Pettin's uh, defensive backs core? And are they similar? Or is it right. tough to compare the two? Yeah, I, I say it's tough to compare the two because Josh Jackson, A, has been out. So we have no idea how his game improved through this offseason. So if you just revert back to draft status, which is what a lot of teams do when they're picking up guys, Tony, John's, Tony Brown was an undrafted free agent, signed with the Chargers, and was cut. That's how he got to Green Bay. Josh Jackson, high draft pick. Um, so clearly there's that level. I mean, and that's just not the Packers' evaluation. That's how the league saw both of those players. So Josh Jackson, probably a better corner, better pure cover guy, uh, probably has a higher ceiling. Um, but we'll see. I mean, he had an up-and-down rookie year, and we were curious if Josh Jackson would play some of that hybrid you know, safety stuff. Um, Jason Simmons didn't rule it out during the OTA, but obviously you know, we haven't seen anything from him. So right now to me, Tony Brown looks like a solid you know, third, fourth corner right now, um, special teams guy. Josh Jackson, you would think, would be the – number three corner if you were playing so I mean we'll see I mean maybe Josh Jackson could knock Tremont Williams' snaps down awesome. if he was here sure. but he's not so yeah. it's kind of hard to really evaluate where he's at right now Gotcha. so Cassie asserts that perhaps because Kevin King has been out so frequently that like we say all the time Jim the best ability <laughs> is availability right. and Kevin King has not necessarily been available is it no. premature at this point to start thinking about perhaps releasing Kevin King? <laughs> yes, very premature. This, it's a little bit like the Brian Bulaga situation. Obviously, Bulaga has sustained big knee injuries now as he's gotten older, back issues like that. Packers fans get real frustrated with that. Never plays, makes whatever dollars. But look, 12 games of Brian Bulaga at right tackle, way better, way better than anything they could do right now. And we've seen Alex Light and Jason Spriggs get totally manhandled. It's backup tackles an issue. But that goes to Kevin King. When Kevin King's healthy, he's way better than anybody else, maybe outside of Jair Alexander. And I think you'd get some arguments that King is probably a better pure cover corner just because he's so much bigger um, and can be more physical. So, no, it is way too early for that. Um, I think where this comes in is after this year, Olivia, because he'll be getting to his fourth season. And why is that important? Because that's his contract year. And a guy like Kevin King is literally, I'll even say 12 games away. If he plays 12 games this year, 13 games next year, he's an $80 million corner. That's just the way this is. So, yeah, I, whether it's here or elsewhere, but that, that's how good he is, and that's how few good corners there are. So the Packers, I think, are just going to have to – kind of deal with it and hope he gets better. I'm sure we will keep some tabs on when yeah. Kevin King returns. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media channels yeah. so you can see when we tweet updates live from training right. camp. I'm curious to see if he plays at uh, all because yeah. he's a guy who like legit doesn't have to play. Like Jair Alexander probably doesn't have to play. So King to me, especially with that shoulder, Olivia, fit that mo model anyway. So we'll see, you know, how much he plays, if at all, and I guess you could compare it to, like, let's say Alexander plays 30 preseason snaps. You would have thought, okay, maybe King would get the same. Um, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, I'll derail this just a bit. I'm sure we're going to get some more questions about Kevin King, which is fine. If you guys have any other thoughts you want to share yep. with us, definitely send them in. But Sherry wants to know, well, first of all, she wants to know about Jordy Nelson. Yeah. She wants to know where she can find the stream of his press conference on Tuesday. I'm sure the Packers will likely have something over on their website. Yeah, he's at, in the media auditorium, so I think it'll follow the same format as they always do. Yes, so yeah. we will have some clips up on our website after the fact. So just make sure, again, that you're checking yeah. out PackersNews.com for all of that coverage about. But, yeah, so yeah. how? What, what was your initial reaction to seeing that 
Jordy Nelson is retiring a Packer. <laughs> Were you surprised, well, yeah, No, there's. I mean, he <laughs> said on June 3rd, I think, hey, that's what I'm going to do. Interesting little note here for the fans. He is not signing a one-day contract. Um, basically, the, the club announced that said, hey, Jordy Nelson informed the team of his decision to retire as a Packer. There was, there was no sort of formal signing of a deal. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why that matters, uh, but it mattered enough that it was worded that way and made it pretty clear. Um, no, I, I have to find out maybe because Steven Jackson somehow got a random drug test when he signed a, a one-day deal with the Rams. I don't know what, uh, what happened with all that, but um, for Packers fans, yeah, Jordy Nelson's retiring as a Packer, but the way it's worded is he's literally just coming here to say, I'm retiring as a Packer, which I guess like any one of us could do. Yeah, sure. I, I am also going to retire. Yeah, as so a... it's very strange in that way, but it'll be, yeah. I'm going to it retire is. It's weird. as uh, my high school's uh, water polo, yeah. whatever, yeah. That's Here's, kind of there's my that's kind of the equivalent. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, it's interesting timing too yeah. during a week where a lot's going on. Yeah. The Texans are coming to town, and we get to hear from Jordy Nelson right before uh, Tuesday's. Practice. Yeah, it is. Um, he definitely does not get the spotlight. Um, you know, some of us. I mean, it's gonna be whatever it is he has to say, and then run right to practice. And let's be real. Um, Jordy Nelson kind of made this retirement known far earlier in the summer so you know i know a lot of people written and talked and uh, i mean three months ago so um it is interesting timing but i guess it's a little bit of a departure from the regular well let's talk a little bit about these upcoming practices yeah. against the texans matt lafleur has had this planned out way in yeah. advance so he in his press conference today was pretty uh he was able to share a lot of information with us about what to expect come the next two practices yeah. it sounds like tomorrow's practice will be about two hours and 15 minutes if you're coming so prepare for that yeah. and there will not be any one-on-one -on -one receivers yeah. versus defensive backs because in Matt LaFleur's experience he says that this is when teams and players start to butt heads a little <laughs> bit on those one-on-ones uh, but besides that yes lots of team drills and lots of uh should be should be interesting for sure yeah it'll be um there will be linemen seven on seven, so somehow they trust the big guys mm -hmm. to hit each other in the face and not get mad about it. Uh, not so much the receivers and DBs. Was that a shot at like diva personalities? Do you think is I that don't the know. is that what the is that Maybe what the head coach were. was saying? Was like these guys are too like linemen you know, are a little bit more right. wholesome. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, there will be competitive seven on sevens, however. So that's going to be fun to watch if you're a fan of the passing game and want to see corners and receivers actually do work against one another. Uh, team drills, um, yeah, obviously the linemen. I think, um, you know, he's worked this out with Bill O'Brien. You know, I know Aaron Rodgers has said several times quite publicly he does not want any fights or any skirmishes. No one wants that. Um, I've covered two joint practices, Olivia, um, and I've never seen any of that. So I think the coaches can really set that tone. Um, for fans, both Clark Hinkle Field and Ray Nitschke Field will be going at the same time. Offenses and defenses on both fields at the same time. So even if you can't get in to Nitschke Field, um, standing along the sidewalk, Clark, Clark Hinkle, I'm guessing you'll be able to see what's going on on that field. All right, so it should be different for me, yeah. for sure. Uh, Stanford wants to know, how are the linebackers catching on? I'm not sure if he means Is that the outside. University of Stanford? That's yeah, that is how you spell his first name. Cool. That is a really cool Thank first you. name. Yeah. Uh, how are the linebackers catching on? So we can start with outside linebackers because yeah. we did hear from Zadarius Smith yeah. for the very first time in the locker room of training camp. He funny anecdote. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we can say this, yeah. right? Yeah. So the reason we were told last week that we were going to hear from Zadarius Smith in the locker room, but we never did. And the reason was because he was going home to let his dog out yeah. during the lunch period that the locker room is open. So there yeah. you have it. He's got that <laughs> taken care of now. Yes. So he, figured he found out. a guy. Yeah. Oh, he found a that. dog guy. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll spend just a little time on outside linebackers just because we've, I think most people, we've tweeted, written, and Facebooked on these guys a lot. Zadarius Smith, Rashawn Gary, uh, Preston Smith, yes, Kyler Fackrell, and Reggie Gilbert, too, have all been seen here in camp. Now, obviously, 
you have the $66 million Zedaria Smith, you see him a little more often than, say, Reggie Gilbert. You know, um, Zedaria Smith wrecked a couple team drills just today to the point where um, I believe it was Jay Sternberger came in to chip him. Zedarius wasn't ready for it, fell down. Zedarius joked around and said, hey, I'm not just some regular guy. Like, you can't do that to me. Mm -hmm. You got to let me know. Um, <laughs> but uh, so those guys have looked good. They have as good as advertised. Fackrell, um, again, a guy in a contract year. It's a big season for him. I think he's looked pretty smooth. Reggie Gilbert, um, again, I think a complimentary piece that he's been. Now, inside linebacking, Olivia, Blake Martinez, solid as usual. Um, Oren Burks is getting the run at next to him. Um, even in some nickel situations, Oren Burks has got that speed, athleticism. You are seeing that. Uh, you're seeing that in coverage, which is good. Um, second unit, Curtis Bolton, undrafted free agent. I would say keep an eye on him. Um, he worked his way into some second team reps heading into family night. Um, Ty Summers, the seventh round pick, used family night to probably earn some more reps today, nearly had an interception. So I think, look, inside linebackers is, are important if they can run. They all can run. Martinez probably not as well as everybody else, but you know he can tackle. So um, I would say, I mean, there, there haven't been a whole lot of holes mm -hmm. defensively, have there? I haven't seen, I mean, maybe, you know, some of those third, fourth, fifth corners, right? I, I mean, but that first 11, throwing a nickel with Shaman Williams, they've been, they've all been pretty solid. And that was has commended them for their yeah. efforts through training camp. Yeah. We'll take a one or two more questions here. Why don't we entertain this uh, this question? Um, Melvin Gordon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reportedly uh, seeking a trade from yeah. the Chargers. Where would he be a fit? I know you tweeted out this <laughs> morning something interesting. You can go ahead and share that if you'd like. But where could you potentially see him fitting? Would Green Bay even right. potentially be a landing spot? Um, so this kind of answers that last question. So I tweeted out this morning, uh, noting my peers in Houston, our peers in Houston, John McClain, The Chronicle, Sarah Barshop with ESPN.com, Texans writers, said I wouldn't do them any favors if there was a trade today Texans for Melvin Gordon that brought Melvin Gordon here to Lambeau um, with J.J. Watt. And Melvin Gordon liked that tweet within seconds <laughs> of me tweeting it. Um, so he's looking to get out. Um, he's also looking to get paid. N maybe getting out would fit Green Bay, but getting paid does not. Um, he's, he's been offered the, reportedly $10 million a year. We don't know the structure of that. Um, Look, the Packers have Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Dexter Williams. Those guys are all on rookie deals. They don't make any money. When you pay your quarterback $33 million, when you pay your left tackle and your starting receiver and you have the highest paid tight end in football, somebody on offense has to bite the bullet and be the guy who makes the rookie deal. Um, and for the Packers, the way it's constructed, those are the running backs and the receivers after Devontae Adams. All the receivers are cheap, but you also pay Corey Lindsley. You've paid Lane Taylor. Uh, you've paid Billy Turner. So there's just not enough dollars. Um, and also, look, they cut Mike Daniels for cap space, Olivia. That, that's going to Kenny Clark. You're going to have to pay that guy knocking on the door of $100 million if he play. You know, I mean, so Melvin Gordon would fit the offense, of course, um, but, I mean... I, I just don't see how it could fit with the dollars he actually wants in order to make trading for him worth it. All right, so hopefully Jim didn't break too many hearts yeah. out there, but if what Jim says is true and the Packers don't have the cash for him, then perhaps maybe lower your expectations. Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway, thank you guys for joining yeah. us. We're going to wrap it up here. Hopefully it hasn't been too loud. They've got the leaf blowers going. Yeah. I think they're cleaning up the All stands. All these people left their trash out on family night. That's what's <laughs> happening behind us. Yes, but hopefully yeah. these uh, wind covers did something. I don't know. They look like maybe they do. I'm not yeah. sure. Anyway. Follow us on all of our social media channels, you guys. Make sure you are checking out everything there because we are putting so many updates over there right. on tr about training camp practices, yeah. observations. Obviously, make sure you are checking out PackersNews.com for lots of stories coming out of training camp, yep. lots of video. It's all over there. 
and we will be back with you guys tomorrow, probably around the same time. I always try to tweet out when exactly right. we're going to be going live. So if you follow me on Twitter, um, you'll be able to know when this is all Right. You'll definitely want to tune in because it will be that really extended practice with full pads with the Texans. Yes. Today was they were half yeah. pad right. shells. Yeah, shells and shoulder pads. Yeah. So a little less lower intensity, but definitely more intensity than the night, the practice before family right. night. But anyway, all right, I'm going to turn off the live stream and I'm going to give Jim his five seconds of yep. glory. Go yeah, I, unfortunately, I do not know how to sing or I would take you out with a tremendous rendition of something. We do need the effects, I think. So make Olivia's slide in, fly in, go viral, Facebook. We need this. I need this in my life. Definitely. See you next time.